Peace to the family. This is the Hood Mystic representing www.hoodmystic.com. And today we're going to talk about Esoteric Astrology 101, a psychological approach to astrology. And before I get started, I want to give a special thanks to Nadia Shaw for this opportunity. And I was deciding on what type of video can I do for the family? And I guess for me, this is more therapeutic in a sense. I want to deal with the foundations of my version of astrology. What it is that I do when you tune into my channel and I'm referencing astrology. So with this video, I just want to give you guys the nuts and bolts of what I do on my channel, the Hermistic channel, as well as, you know, just my frame of thought and my point of reference. So once again, I want to thank Nadia for being a true pioneer and a true OG like really set in the tone um, before I was ever doing astrology videos. I'm sure like most of you, I was referencing her videos for just a sense of awareness of the time. So I just want to thank you and I want to thank all of your subscribers for pay for, you know, checking out this video as well as any future endeavors that we do um, this Christmas. Me and Nadia took a well, she invited me to take part of her um Christmas raffle and we gave away some of our books. So I just want to bring that up first and foremost to talk about me and sort of the things that I do. So give me one moment. So over these years, especially 2019, I put out three books. The first book, How to Read Natal Charts Easily Effectively, Understanding Your Birth Chart in Your Own Language is actually a workbook that I, you know, have been selling on Amazon for the most part, helping people understand their astrology charts in their own way. You know, I do readings as well. And um, part of this idea is that doing readings, it's only so much that I could tell a person that now um, I feel like in this day and age, it's really important for you to understand your chart in your own words. And that's what this workbook actually helps you to do. My second book, Astrology Explained, is more of an esoteric approach and more of what we'll be talking about in this video today and how I've actually worked through astrology in various different forms and how I connect astrology to the Tarot. It's an excellent book. It's my third book, but my second book, Manipulating the Matrix, is a moon book and how we kind of journal with the moon at night and then journal our days in the morning. So that's another guided workbook that's designed to help you understand your manifestations. Another powerful book. But if you want any more information about me or my books, please visit me at www mystic.com so esoteric astrology a psychological approach to astrology is what is the foundation for my actual work esoteric meaning the inner more of the more powerful you know when they say as without so within the esoteric side is me expressing that actual aspect and this is the most difficult complex aspect to human life we have the external situation figured out or not figured out but with my astrology i'm always wondering what's going on on the inside because there's always things that are happening on the outside whether it's jobs you know privilege class gender all of these things are awesome. But when I look into astrology, I'm really looking at what's happening on the inside. And even the term astrology, I really take that term very, very serious when it comes to my work. Because in this study, I've come across the term called astrocyte. And an astrocyte, it, it really protects your blood ba brain barrier from like all of the toxicity, toxic things that we've ingested throughout our time. 
throughout our lives. But this astro site is actually the barrier from anything negative from ever getting into your mind. So that's just one level. But then I'll get into this slide where we're talking about every man and every woman is a star. So in understanding astrology, there are things like correspondence, um, being able to understand things that are far away and then relate them very close to you. And to me, that helps me understand astrology through correspondence, through the law of correspondence. And then finally, psychology, the study of the soul. You would almost think that a psychologist is somebody that you just sit and listen to and speak to about your problems. But in studying the etymology of the word psychology, it is found in the study of the soul. So to actually study the soul is a very complex study and you never really figure that aspect out. So with my daily application of esoteric astrology, I'm able to come and show forth every video, a new understanding of life based upon time, based upon astrology, and also based upon esotericism. So like I said earlier, astrology is the study of the star, but we say that word a lot, but how many times have you ever sought and thought about what a star actually is? So in this slide, we'll be more diving into what a star actually is and why is it so important for us to study astrology, the study of a star. So a star represents an individual identity that radiates light and energy. So I always like to teach people, first and foremost, when you look at the star, let's think about it as the sun. Now we have our sun, but revolving around our sun are planets. Now on this particular planet, there are many different suns that have many different orbits. But with this understanding, every man and every woman is a star. A star has a unique perspective, but still moves in order with other stars. So what do I mean by this? Of course, we say we have free will and that's relegated to your home and your way of life. But I dare you to go next door to your next door neighbor's house and just go walk into anybody's house that you want and say, oh, I have free will. It doesn't necessarily work like that, because remember, every man and every woman is a star. So, of course, you have a unique perspective but you still have to move in a certain order. When you're riding in the highway, if everybody is going in one direction, you as a star can't say, you know what? I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna switch directions and I'm gonna just do my own and completely different thing. So in that particular understanding, learning astrology is key because it teaches us about our order, but it still gives us a unique perspective. Additionally, stars are self-luminous. They derive, they derive their power from within and not an outside source. So when you reference our sun, it is constantly generating energy from within. And because it is doing that at such a high level, it is creating an orbit. So when we reference ourselves as a star, we begin to feed upon ourselves or feed upon our souls and learn our unique perspective and also understand our individual identity from a more within aspect. So this is the esoteric side of the astrology, okay? Stars are constantly in motion, yet, yet interacting with gravitational pulls from other stars and planetary influences. So a reason that we study astrology in this fashion is because we are always growing. We are always expanding. We're always retracting or some form in between. And if we think that it's all based upon our mind and our logic, and we don't understand our 
own orbit and our own gravitational pull and our own planetary influences, that can be kind of confusing. So, so many times people have came to me for readings and they have been completely sure, but completely unsure about what's going on. So by a, by being able to look at a person's chart, I'm able to kind of align that confusing aspect from a psychological esoteric point of view and not even on a personal reading on my channel, I do something that's called daily energy reading. So why do we even study astrology? We study astrology because we want to understand our divinity, our esotericism, um, the fact that we are all stars. We are individual identities that radiate light and energy have unique perspectives, self luminous, all of this represents divinity. All of this represents sovereignty. Of course, you know, sovereignty could be a big thing or a big deal, but we first need to understand sovereignty from an esoteric point of view before we can understand sovereignty from an exoteric point of view. So like I said earlier, and I'll probably repeat this throughout the video, every man and every woman is a star. A star is an individual identity that radiates energy. It goes, it is a point of view. Its object is become the whole by establishing relations with, under, with other stars. Each such relation is an event. It is an act of love under will. And this is a quote from Aliester Crowley, and I can't really explain it any better in reference to understanding why I study astrology or what kind of astrology I actually speak to. So with that understanding, love under will, we hear that statement a lot if you study like um, Aliester Crowley and those particular Theosophical Society thinkers, OTO, things of that nature. Uh, love under will, if not fully understood, um, it might sound like a cool catchphrase. However, when you do understand it and you connect it to every man and every woman being a star, okay, now we're cooking with grease. Why is that? So what is will? Will is stating something that you will do, right? I will wake up and go to the store. I will be famous one day. I will be in love, you know, and that is will within itself. But pure will is actually doing that and actually aligning that without saying what you will do. So pure will is a pure expression. It's a pure alignment. It's almost as if you could predict the future. So with astrologers, it's like, man, you just read my whole entire life, you know? And that's because pure will is way more powerful than the will that we think that we have in the realms of control. Because when you say I will, you're literally saying that I hope. However, when you don't say that you will and you just simply be and simply act, then that is you aligning to your astrology. That is you loving under will. So outside of purpose, there is reason in the mind which serve as blocks to perfection. So. When you say I will, that creates a purpose that creates a reason that creates the mind. So there are levels to did I do a good job? How far am I along the way? And this is not being this is actually a block to perfection for which astrology is presenting to you. See, perfection is unlimited and infinite and pure will is perfection. So within you, there is an unlimited, infinite being within you. However, it does not require you to say, I will be unlimited and infinite. It is found in pure 
forethought, which is knowing or clear cognizance and action. So when you know and you act, you are in perfect astrology. But when you're not in perfect astrology, I am the person who provides the astrology. And that's on my daily energy readings or in personal reading. So every woman and every woman is a star. I've said that a few times, but this is really what I do. This is really what I'm about. Every woman and every woman is a star. And so this is the ability to will things into existence and in love. So why is this important? Because each such relation is an event when we establish relations with other stars. So our events are not found in isolation. Our events are found in the modality of connecting to other stars. So in understanding our astrology, we understand our 11th house, we understand our 10th house, our 9th house, our 8th house, and our 7th house. See, all of these houses, once you evolve, well, from the 6th house on, are learning how to incorporate other individuals within your reality safely without redirecting or taking you off of your trajectory. The problem with consciousness within itself is that you may think that there is a solution that is found within isolation. However, when you enact this star principle, you automatically will things into existence such as love. So what is a star? A star is a creative, sentient individual. He is noble and sublime, and this is sovereignty because a star is free, independent, all shining and glorious. So with every man and every woman being a star, that means that each one of us is sovereign. Each one of us is divine in our own little way. And this is the point of my work is to show that you are divine, period. You are sublime, period. You are sentient, period. You are unique in an individual period. That's the idea that I try to come across with this actual work. So to understand this a little better, astrology to me and how I present it is the study of the macro and the micro relationship and dealing with time. So this is why we reference charts, daily charts, weekly charts, uh, birth chart, so forth and so on, because we want to understand this actual relationship, which we call the astrological chart in real time. So the astrology on one hand, we have our soul on this side, and then on the other side, we have our humanity. And so our soul and our humanity are constantly playing this back and forth tug of war game. And if you don't understand this back and forth tug of war game, that's, then you're just simply playing it. When you step outside of it, you enter into the realms of astrology and we then ease that internal tug of war. So there is always a battle between you. There is the soul and there's the humanity. And these things constantly go back and forth and this creates psychological tension. The soul represents our love, okay? And then this side over here represents our contraction, our fear, and whatever it is opposite to our love. So this could be selfishness, humanity, so forth and so on. What we can do by studying astrology is figure this side out. This is the logic and the reasoning of the soul the the macro of the whole entire thing and if we just aren't confused about it we just simply understand it in the realms of breathing but love is equated to breathing why do you breathe you breathe to live so why do you love you love to live you love to connect with the soul and this eases the psychological tension but we don't stop there. We understand it from a deeper level. One second.
Okay, cool. <laughs> we understand this from a deeper level in the realms of correspondence. Now, correspondence is a close similarity or a connection or an equivalent of two objects, no matter what the distance is, okay? No matter how far away. If it resonates with you, then that means that is within you. And this is another understanding of esotericism. And this is another version of esoteric astrology. We always understand that our outer world is a reflection of our inner world. And this is a hard pill, huge pill, um, bitter pill to swallow because we always think that internally we are perfect and our outer world needs to catch up. However, when we have problems in our outer world due to the law of correspondence, then that means that we have to do work on the inner. It's much easier when you understand this, it's just harder to understand it. So we're referencing the law of correspondence, but we're also referencing universal law as within, so without, as above, so below. And this is tied into the law of correspondence. You are what you are seeking. So in the realms of astrology, we can always understand in the multitude of variations between lights and shades, constellation, planetary influence of what's going on. In order to decode it or to understand it, we have to understand it through now, the beginning, the middle and the end. So when we feel certain things and we travel through certain things in our lives, there is also an astrological correspondence that can help you navigate it if you are seeking it. However, what tends to happen is that especially if our mirror is dirty, foggy, cracked, even we want to isolate ourselves and not find a solution and not find a correspondence because we honestly think that is personal. However, in my study, I found that it is extremely universal to actually do alchemy and alchemy is really found in Scorpio or found in the eighth house or found in Pluto. And these things are transmuting the negative into the positive. So we can always use astrology for our lives, symptoms and uh, sentiments and all of these particular things that we just think are separate from astrology, we can find that connection through the law of correspondence. So in order to be able to make it, you have to put aside the fear of failing and the desire of succeeding. You have to do these things completely and purely without fear, without desire, because the things that we do without lust of result are the purest actions we shall ever take. So why am I referencing this in the realms of astrology? Because more than not, people expect to find something great within their astrology. And you may find, you know, that you are the incarnation of the king of the world. However, if that is what you are seeking, then you won't be able to execute it. However, when you deal with your astrology in the sake of simply just learning it without no sake of return, then you're able to understand your chart. So my repetition and my ability to stay within the realms of astrology is because I'm not looking for anything. I'm just simply reading and analyzing the chart and whatever it reads, that's what I'll speak. So why do we not want to have a lust for result? Because if we think that we are this particular person or this particular sentiment, or we have these particular life goals, when we read our chart, we're only looking for those particular indicators. And we're not able to see who we are in totality. So to establish peace within one, you have to develop a perspective of non-attachment, especially when you're researching your astrology chart. And especially when I'm dealing with the astrology, I'm really trying to learn as I go. Okay. 
even to this day of doing astrology, you know, for close to three years on YouTube, I'm still here to learn. I'm still here to present information as if I'm just now learning it for the first day. Because when you're attached to results, you are bound. And when you're not able to be able to learn from your research, learn from your application, you're more or less probably feeding into an illusion, okay? Pure will is perfect because it is not attached to results or does it ever get tired? So when you say, I will do this, I will do that, it sounds good at first, but we've all been there where we wish we wouldn't have never said what we will do. However, when we just show up and we are able to act and able to have a particular alignment first and foremost, then we're able to do unlimited amount of things. It's only when we're obligated to particular energies or particular affirmations that we've said that we take ourselves out of perfection. However, when we study our astrology and we just simply observe it and whatever we come up out of that observance, whatever some total that we can come out of, you know, doing this cosmic geometry or sacred geometry, that is what we get. And we don't try to put our own spin on it. We don't try to put our own twist on it because we have no dog in this fight. So to come back, Astrology is how we psychologically adjust, how we align with our soul because our soul is moving. Our star is moving at a higher level beyond our conscious mind. So the observance of astrology through correspondence without the lust of result allows us to align with our higher self almost naturally without us even realizing it. Our life is completely assimilated into a system of symbology and structure consistent with the self. So why doesn't Venus just jump across the whole board and, you know, today I was in Taurus, but to, tomorrow I'll be in Scorpio, you know, is the same way that you just can't move into somebody's house. The same way you just can't cross over the expressway line and just decide if everybody's going to the West, I'm going to travel to the East. It just won't work that way. There is a particular order to life and there is a particular structure with life. And just because you don't know it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not there. So the psychological adjustment is the alignment. Psychological maladjustment is looking at everything on the surface. And when everything doesn't match up with the surface, then that is a problem. However, when you're esoteric and you study astrology and you're looking at it from a psychological point of view, then you may not even have problems when everybody around you is having problems or you might have problems and know exactly what to do to fix them because you know that everything is has to be consistent with the self. And when we reference the self, we're referencing the soul or the sun or our star. OK, cool. <laughs> so. Another thing that I like to study with astrology is the heart or the earth or our perspective. The heart is an anagram for earth. And in most astrology, people do not reference the earth, but generally the earth will be 180 degrees from your sun. So if my sun is in Virgo, my heart is in Pisces. And this is very important when it comes to first loves and past loves and divine twin flames or whatever new hot word everybody is calling it these days. Uh, the heart is where the home is, so forth and so on. So if my son is in Virgo, my earth is in Pisces, that would indicate that my first love or a really significant love of mine would be a Pisces. And guess what? That's true. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. So knowledge of the heart gives true insight. 
And so in understanding the heart and understanding this work, because my work actually comes from the heart, you have to understand that when I made this choice, I understood that it's not going to be found from any book. There is no actual hood mystic school of thought. Uh, the books that I have put out their workbook. So I'm really hoping that you could be the author of your life. I'm hoping that you could be the guru by following and tapping into your heart. So wherever you're getting a reading from me or you're watching my channel on YouTube, my only goal is to lead you to your heart because your heart is your teacher. Your heart is your book. Your heart is your foundation. Now we need to get knowledge of the heart and we can't just automatically just have it in one day. Knowledge of the heart is like a seed and it takes time to develop this whole entire work, this whole entire endeavor from writing books to being on YouTube. It didn't start off this way. It was a very small seed. However, I was the one to continuously water it, nurture it and protect it to make sure it grows. So the lust of result and really finding and balancing yourself and understanding planetary influences can be found in chakra work. So the heart chakra is also known as Anahata. And in a definition of Anahata is unstricken. So unstricken is that part of you that has not been hurt, that has not lost the battle, that is not depressed, that has not been defeated, that's not quarantined, that's not going through any type of difficult situation. The heart is unstricken. And this has been found in many ancient civilizations as the energy of Om. And this is a very subtle vibration. This is very subtle. But once you connect, connect to the ohm of the heart, then your heart begins to speak to you. And when it begins to speak to you, then you become hungry for a particular new knowledge. And this knowledge for me is the study of the stars in the complexity of the constellations, whether it's Western astrology, Eastern, Vedic, Cyril, 13 sign astrology, Lahari, Fagan Bradley, you name it. If it has some truth to it, if it resonates with me, then I am the person to just simply listen to it without a lust for result. However, if you are focused on your lower realms or your lower planetary influences, then you may be focused or stuck and less of results. So this is why people may listen. This is why people may get a reading, but they want me to be a fortune teller. They want me to be their guru. They want me to be their healer. However, the reason why we keep coming back, the reason why we need to learn is because we need to release or balance our lower chakras so we can get to that part within our being that has no lust for result, that's tapped into pure will, that will allow us to get to where we need to go without us even stating it, just simply understanding the timing of it. Is this an easy work? Absolutely not. Is it rewarding without a shadow of a doubt? So this is my last lie, and this is how I'd be concluding. What is astrology? What is the overall effect of what I'm trying to do and what I'm trying to establish? I'm trying to inspire you spiritually. I'm trying to inspire your star, but in a particular way, I don't want you to and really, this is my intention. I don't want you to be this great person and then isolate yourself in your mansion and say, thank you, Hood Mystic, for helping me become great. I want to inspire you to love under will. I want to inspire you to 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 tap into your heart, listen to your heart and continue this conversation over a consistent period of time. And this is more or less my work and my purpose and my intention every time I get behind this microphone. So one of my key statements through my channel is leave your ego 
at the door because the ego, when it's entering into this astrology, it's always scheming on how to improve your life, finances, love life, all of these particular things. And all of these particular things are great. However, if you aren't aware of your mind, of your heart, and the, then the quietness and the serenity that comes from delving deep into the celestial movements and connecting those movements to your esoteric sense of awareness, then you might be slightly confused on where you should go. However, when you simply are in awareness or observation, you don't have to say, oh, what does this mean? Oh, what does that mean? It'll come to you, okay? It'll come to you if you stick with it long enough. So, we, why are we studying astrology? What is it? We are trying to connect our ego because we're dealing with psychological, and I'm more of a Jungian, Jungian Carl Jung school of thought. And so, I understand, or I teach, or I try to convey that everything presents a shadow. So the ego, not unchecked, presents a shadow, but that shadow isn't negative. That shadow is just the soul that you've ignored. And once we acknowledge the soul or the shadow for which we've ignored, we can easily change our outer world because that shadow or soul represents our inner world, our inner heart, and by contacting it, on a consistent basis, changing our outer world is mere child's play. So hopefully this video was just a little taste of what I do and what I'm attempting to do with my daily energy readings, with my books, with my channel. It's a little unique, but I'm growing and understanding who I am every day, learning my purpose, every day so let me conclude and give a huge 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 shout out to nadia thank you thank you thank you so much for this opportunity and if you need anything from me please let me know you can visit me at www.hoodmystic.com as well as visit me or hit me up on the email hoodmystic at gmail.com once again thank you to nadia shah and all of her subscribers all of her supporters this is the hood mystic representing www.hoodmystic.com peace